Hi folks, Ken here. I'm going to make what I'm hoping is going to be a really short video in my randomly scheduled series of how to become insanely productive using chat GPT. So a little bit of background and I'm hoping this is going to be short because many times when I make these, I start going down rabbit holes and next thing you know, it's a half hour long and no one's going to watch it. So let's see what I can do to keep this one short. A little bit of context though. I'm at the beginning of creating an RAG pipeline, a retrieval augmented generation AI pipeline that's going to be using my 1.1 million black history and news records I have in my black facts database to build an LLM. As with everything I build, the initial use case is generally for to be a client of a more broader platform, you know, or, or you know, more additional use cases. And that is the case with this, although I can't comment much on the larger um, project because it's something that I'm doing under NDA right now. Anyway, um, so I'm going to be pulling this data from my SQL Server database and pre-processing it into um, JSON files that have article text and metadata that's derived from natural language processing um, engines. So what I have done is, since um, I dogmatically practice things like separation of concerns and building things abstractly, that's how you have to think to build platforms. So I have a, an abstract base class. Well, let me back up. While my initial use case is pulling data from database, it's also going to be used to pull data from URLs. So I'll extract the text from URLs. And so I want to use, have the same conversion um, modules regardless of where the data comes from. So what I have done is I came up with the concept of a content source, probably changed the name because it's kind of clunky, um, where this is basically an iterator that's going to iterate through a collection of article content. And I'm going to, in parallel, I'm going to build a file system sourcer that will use a folder, and I'm going to do a database sourcer. So pro tip here, the best way that I've figured out how to make sure I don't accidentally build dependencies into my code is to work on multiple use cases at the same time, because that will force me to push my common code down in my base class and implement my concrete class code here. So what I mean is, as this is a database um, source class, this is gonna know about connection, database connection strings and database fields, et cetera. Whereas my file system source isn't gonna know anything about that stuff. All it's gonna know about is I have a bunch of articles and I'm gonna iterate through those articles and each time I spit out an article, I need to know how to get the text and get the metadata. So this is object-oriented programming approaches regardless of the language. And I say that because I do most of my work in C Sharp because I've been a .NET uh, developer for the past 24 years and a Microsoft developer for 30 years. So I hardly even know Python. Most of the Python that I've written has been written for me by my best friend, ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot that I have integrated into Visual Studio. So, and I use Visual Studio code somewhat, but I use Visual Studio full version more because I'm used to it and whatever. So, and, and if you're doing Python with Visual Studio full, you just need to go into the installer and add the Python workloads. So, Hopefully that wasn't too much of an introduction. So let's get to the code generation. So 
what I, I'm going to copy and paste my base class and my uh, folder class into the GitHub Copilot chat window. Unfortunately, it looks, it seems to me from asking it that GitHub Copilot chat can't really directly analyze files in my project, but I'm, I'm not sure if it's lying to me or not because it makes recommendations that seem like it really knows what's going on. But in any event, I'm gonna work with it the same way I worked with GitHub Copilot in my browser, which is I follow the sequence of telling it exactly what I want to do and telling it what kind of data I'm going to give it. Then I give it the data and also I tell it what I want it to do with that data. So I'm about to hit the Windows H key, which turns on speech recognition, because most of the time that I work with GitHub Copilot or um, ChatGPT, I just talk to it and it does a great job of figuring out what I want. So let's go. I would like your help building out the Sourcer folder class for me. I'm going to give you my base class and the beginning of my concrete class. And what I need you to do to help me out is to implement the abstract class methods in my concrete class. Thank you. All right, so now, did it get all of that? Did the voice thing not? get all my voice stuff, that's that's peculiar. Um, okay. My concrete class, by implementing the abstract class methods in my sourcer folder class. Yeah, I really don't know why it, messed up before and it's calling it sorcerer but it's going to figure it out so i'm pasting in the abstract class and i'm copying and pasting in the concrete class and let's see how good a job it does some room here let's see what we got here all right, so it has a couple of the imports that we're missing, iterator. So it's going to grab the files from the folder I give it and save that in pro uh, protected underscore files. That looks good. Iterator just returns itself. So here's the fun stuff next. Interesting. Okay. Open the file as text and return the text, right? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't know how to do the metadata, so that's fair. All right, so I'm going to paste that in. Interestingly enough, it did not notice that I didn't have a, an import from, for the logger because the, uh, that's this one. IntelliSense for Python, you know, helps me find my uh, base classes and things like that. So, like, you know, for my imports. All right. So metadata also is a class that's in the project. It's in here. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with implementing the metadata. Um because I'll figure that out. So this is the metadata class. So it's just like, you know, author publication. In a file, I'm not going to know the author. I'm not going to try to read the file system author. You know, I'll use the file date. There won't be any tags. I might or might not bother with a file URL. Anyway, so that was the source, by the file-based one. This next. Is that like a real function or? 
Yeah, this may not actually work. <laughs> I, I'm probably going to have to implement um, this manually, you know, from the array. And, and um, you know what? Let me tell it. Hi, the next method that you generated doesn't really exist. So please implement the iteration in the folder sourcer by using the files array and walking through it by keeping track of an index. This is an example of why well, chat GPT is an incredibly powerful tool for making you insanely productive. You really need to know what you're doing also so that you can catch things like that because it is not perfect. And so, yeah, did it do what I thought? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to copy this. It didn't do my... Um, import, so I'm not going to overwrite those accidentally. So now we start off with the zero index. The next method checks to make sure that we haven't fallen off the edge of the earth, you know, and we'll return the next file and throw stop iteration. That's how iterators stop. It'll read the file and, you know, to be determined, we'll do the metadata. So that's good enough for, you know, me saving time. And I could stop here, but since I'm a glutton for punishment, let me see how well it does with the database one. Okay, that was pretty good. So please try again with the database sourcer. I'm going to use PyODBC because I am pulling data from a Microsoft SQL Server database. And I'm going to use a query that will get max records from the table that is named in my constructor. So please take a shot at implementing the database sourcer based on my starting code. Okay. Paste this into the thingy here. Add a lot of blank space. And let's see what my programming assistant does for me here. So it knew that I was going to import PyO to BC. Looks pretty good. I'm going to copy this. And did it? Yeah, it, 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 it forgot about these others, these other imports. I might not have copied it, to be fair. I'm going to have to install PyO to I wonder if uh, IntelliSense would do that for me. No. In C sharp stuff, it'll it'll actually, um, you know, we'll we'll insert something, we'll install something for you. But it's okay. I can just uh, I can do it right here. Manage Python packages, and this is p y o d b c. So run command that. Yeah, do that. And meanwhile, let me see what it's going to be here. As my table name, the max records, it would do a connect, select top max records, star max records from that. Uh, fetch all, so it's just loading everything into memory and then iterating through the loaded records. Okay. In C sharp, I might have done it a little different, but that's because I know how to use the record set. I mean, excuse me, the data reader, because like if you're doing a million records, you don't want to try to load everything in here. But I'm going to go with this for version one, you know, because I'm, I'm going to test this with like, you know, 100 records first. So 
you know, I may end up in a future version taking this cursor and, you know, iterating, doing a little more intelligent iteration, et cetera, et cetera. And I might end up providing things like column names, blah, 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 you know, but this is all, you know, future stuff. And so it loaded PyODBC and I'm going to stop here, you know, before I fall into the rabbit hole of, you know, making another half hour recording and no one's going to listen, watch. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks. Keep your eye out for more videos like this. I drop them whenever I happen to think about it. So there's no schedule. If you want to see where I always will post them, if you're on Facebook, look for the Black Tech Entrepreneurs Facebook group. And I also will drop them from time to time on the Black Facts Online YouTube channel. So, all right, Schultz, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.